All right, we are moving into our last lecture, and there's a couple things I want to add that aren't necessarily covered so much in the textbook. So first off, from about 1939 until 1942, the Axis powers actually had a chance to win World War II, but that was because they had been preparing for war and the Allies hadn't. But by mid-1942, the Allied powers caught up technologically and ended up defeating the Axis powers in three arenas, air, water, and land. The Axis powers tended to focus on creating the best. They wanted the best ships and subs, the best planes, the best tanks, and the best guns. But by focusing on making what was the best, it took a long time and they couldn't mass produce things. On the other hand, the Allies were focused on making the most of everything. They might not have had the fanciest um, guns, planes, tanks, subs, but they could make a lot and they could make them quickly. And numbers ended up being what won out in the end. Also, the Allies divided up among themselves, so the United States, the United Kingdom, and the Soviet Union divided up amongst themselves who would make what, and they shared what they learned. Like, maybe, for, for example, the Russians made a really good tank, but the gun that was on the tank wasn't that great, so then the Americans helped the Russians by giving them a better gun to go on the tank. Or, the... Americans made a really good airplane, but the British made a really good engine. So they would put the British engine in the American airplane and make something that worked really, really well. So the, Amer the Allies worked together. The Axis powers tended to be jealous of each other and didn't want to share the knowledge. And that ultimately led to the downfall of the Axis powers. So now let's jump in. We've already talked about the bombing of Pearl Harbor and the invasion of Poland. So now we're going to go into a little bit deeper into what happened during World War II. One more thing I want to say before we move on. In World War I, the Allies had tried to attack the homeland, attack Germany, and that didn't work out. That led to trench warfare and a stalemate. In World War II, the Allies started by attacking the outside of the Axis powers and moving further and further inland and into the interior of the Axis stronghold until they finally were able to conquer Italy and then Germany and also Japan. So, the course of the war. At the beginning of the war, the Axis powers were winning. That was partially, like I said just a second ago, because they had actually built up their military while the rest of Europe had only tried to appease them. But also with the Blitzkrieg, they were attacking countries that were very close to them and also were very unprepared for war. So because of that, the Axis powers looked a lot more powerful and a lot more successful than they actually were. Ultimately, in World War II, 60 nations were involved, and there is even fighting on Antarctica. So this truly was a world war. So we're going to focus on Western Europe first. So this is like Germany and West, so France, England, those countries. Germany wanted to control Denmark and Norway. So after they had conquered the land that they took over and invaded Poland, they next went to the Netherlands and to Belgium. So we're not quite to that yet. The Allies tried to stop Hitler by sending troops into Belgium, but that didn't work because Hitler had planned that the Allies would probably do that. So he moved his troops and sent them around the Allies and got to them from the other side through France. So the Allies ended up getting stuck at Dunkirk and then a miracle happened. Truly, God was on the side of the Allies in this particular circumstance because the weather ended up being terrible for nine whole days. The Hitler wanted to attack the Allies by air, but there was a terrible fog and the wind was blowing in the wrong direction. And so for nine days, he couldn't get to Dunkirk. During that time, the English civilians 
used every kind of boat they could possibly find to ferry soldiers from Dunkirk across the English Channel to England. And this ended up saving the Allied army. But it resulted in the fall of France, and France ended up being taken over by Germany. So, yes, the Allied army was saved, but France ended up falling. So then Hitler began bombing England. The goal of the bombing of England was to get the civilians to get, to get tired of war and ask their government to give up. But England had Winston Churchill, and last week you listened to the speech by Winston Churchill where he said, we will fight here, we will fight there, we will fight on the landing grounds, we will fight in the fields, we will fight, we will never surrender. And that was the attitude of the English people. They did not want to surrender. They realized that they were fighting against tyranny. They were fighting for their way of life. They were fighting for freedom. And because of all of those things, the Germans were not able to defeat the British. And so the British army ended up becoming more strong and the Royal Air Force ended up destroying many of the German planes. And ultimately, the Germans ended up not bombing for the entire war. One other side note, if you've seen the movie or read the book, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, at the beginning of the book, Peter, Susan, Edmund, and Lucy are sent out to the English countryside because the Germans were bombing the cities and the children of lots and lots of different families were sent out to the country because they were believed to have been safer out in the country. All right, now let's shift to Eastern Europe. So this is going to be from Germany to the East. At the beginning of World War II, Russia was actually an ally of Germany because of the agreement that they had made in August of 1939. But then the Russians were invaded by the Germans and that pretty much changed everything. So Russia started to take control of that side of the continent and Germany ended up realizing that that was not going to be a good thing. And they also wanted a bunch of the resources that were in Russia. So the Germans ended up invading Russia or the Soviet Union to get control of the natural resources. So Russia sent 3 million troops to their border to fight against the Germans, but as the Germans were coming, the Russians would retreat further and further into their country. This should sound sort of similar to something that we learned about before. Oh, Napoleon, same sort of situation. As the Russians were retreating, they were also employing a strategy called the burnt earth strategy, which means that they destroyed everything in the path that the Germans would have been able to use food, um, weapons, military things, clothing. But ultimately, this ended up being a problem for the Russians as well because they were burning food supplies that couldn't be eaten by their soldiers or by their civilians. So the Germans weren't able to advance because of the weather and because it became freezing cold in Russia and the Russians the Germans ended up surrendering to the Russians in February of 1943. So that would be a change, a tide turn for the, um, the Allied side. So continuing to talk about different places where the war was fought, we're going to move into North Africa. Remember back between World War I and World War II, Italy started trying to gain territory in Africa. So that's the country that ended up trying to gain territory there. Once the war started, Italy was pretty much unsuccessful. So Hitler sent General Edwin, sent General Erwin Rommel to help the Italians and then they ended up being successful. But ultimately the British and the Americans teamed up and led to defeating the Germans and the Italians. So Britain with General Bernard L. Montgomery and also America's um, General Eisenhower worked together to fight in Africa.
then because the the Germans and the other Axis powers, Italy, were defeated in Africa. Then the Allied powers started to go up the Italian peninsula and start attacking that way. So now let's move out to the Pacific. So the Pacific is going to be Japan and the United States fighting out there. So at the beginning of the war, the fighting was concentrated on the Philippine Islands but General MacArthur had to leave the Philippines because he was afraid that he was going to be attacked and that his military, his soldiers were gonna end up getting captured. So Japan ended up expanding its empire and conquering and taking over a whole bunch of islands, but they actually kind of bit off more than they could chew and took over more land than they were able to defend because of this, that ended up being their downfall. There were multiple naval victories for the United States. There's two that are really important. We have the Coral Sea battle, which stopped Japan from invading Australia. And then Midway served as an important US Navy base and many of the Japanese ships were destroyed in the Battle of Midway. So then, the American strategy shifted to capturing important islands and kind of island hopping towards Japan so that they could take over Japan because the bombers that had the bombs on them weren't able to fly super long distances. Yes, they could fly long distances, but in order to be able to drop bombs where it mattered, Japan, the Americans needed to be able to get as close to that land as possible. So that's part of the reason why the Americans were doing the island hopping strategy to get closer and closer to Japan. So there's several significant turning points that happened in the World War II. The first one would be the German invasion of Russia. This happened very early on in the war, but because of that, it broke the alliance between Russia and Germany. And it also made it so that the Germans were able were not able to defend themselves anymore. So they failed on this offense and then they had to try and defend themselves. The next major turning point obviously is going to be the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor. This one is significant because it woke the quote sleeping giant of America and it led the allies to systematically move towards Japan because otherwise the Japan probably wouldn't have been attacked very much since most of the fighting was happening in Europe before the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor. The next important turning point would be the invasions of North Africa and Italy. So General Dwight D. Eisenhower, who later became one of our presidents, led troops to North Africa and helped the British there. And then, like I told you a little bit ago, he went to Sicily and advanced up through Italy. Next, we have D-Day, June 6, 1944. Huge, significant battle here. This led to the retaking of France and the Allies were able to push the Germans back and ultimately defeat them. And the last turning point is what ultimately completely ended the war, dropping the atomic bombs on Japan. So now we're gonna to move towards the conclusion of the war. Remember in World War I, how the Allies focused on the country of Germany and trying to take over Germany. Well, in World War II, like I said already, they focused on the countries outside and then got closer and closer and closer to Germany itself. So let's talk about the end in Europe because that happened first. Before we talk about the end in Europe though, I need to let you know that on April 12, 1945, President Roosevelt died. When he died, President Harry S. Truman took over. We'll come back to that in just a second. So the Allies advanced from both the West and the East. So we have the United Kingdom, France, and the United States moving on Germany from the West, and we have the Soviet Union moving from the East and kind of 
sandwiching the Germans in between these two armies, and ultimately the Germans ended up surrendering to the Allies on May 8, 1945. So this is VE Day, Victory in Europe Day, May 8, 1945. But just because the Axis powers, basically Germany and Italy, surrendered in Europe, that did not mean that the war was over. There was still fighting happening in the Pacific again between the United States and the Japanese. So the Japanese refused to surrender. And part of the reason that they refused to surrender is because they were fighting to defend their homeland, they were fighting, fighting to defend their way of life, and they actually felt very safe in their island country. They were a very nationalistic group of people. But, so I told you that Harry S. Truman ended up taking over after President Roosevelt passed away. And when he took over, he found out about the atomic bomb. He didn't know that it existed beforehand, but he decided right away that the Americans were going to end up using that bomb. And so he actually warned the Japanese that if they did not surrender, then prompt and utter destruction would end up happening. Uh, the Japanese refused to surrender, and the first atomic bomb was dropped in Japan less than two weeks later. So lots of historians tend to, to debate the morality of using the atomic bomb. The atomic bomb ended up killing millions of people very, very quickly, and lots of civilians ended up dying because of the atomic bomb. But on the other side, the historians also point out that if the Allies had had to attack Japan and conquer it, there would have been a lot more people who had died. The Japanese probably would have used kamikazes. They would have uh, many uh, allied soldiers would have been killed. Many Japanese people, civilians would have been killed as they fought to protect their homeland. So although the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki did end up leading to lots of people dying, most historians believe that it ended up being a life-saving situation and it ended up bringing the war to an end much more quickly. So then we have September 2nd, 1945, VJ Day, Victory Japan Day, which ultimately brought the end to World War II. All right, so now we need to talk about the consequences of World War II. First of all, 60 million people died. These are not just soldiers, but civilians as well. Russia was responsible for killing millions of its own people. Jews were killed in death camps. The Japanese were wiping out people. The Japanese soldiers were very effective at killing civilians. Also, the economy around the world was destroyed. Germany was divided among the four allies, the United States, the United Kingdom, Russia, and the Soviet, Russia and France. They were told that they weren't allowed to have any nuclear weapons or a military. Then they started to do really well and economically they've turned their country around in recent years. Japan wasn't invaded, but they also suffered too. There were very strict policies put into Japan. They weren't allowed to have a military either, but because they weren't spending money on the military, they were able to build up their economy and create a strong infrastructure and strong um, industry as well. Until about 1960, the United States dominated the world economy, but then they started to get sloppy and Germany and Japan ended up catching up with America technologically and they ended up, the United States ended up struggling for a while. Plus, the United States entered into a cold war between the Soviet Union, Russia, and that hurt the United States for a while. The United Kingdom had fought for freedom but they didn't give freedom to their own people. So their colonies around the world ended up revolting and their industries were nationalized by the government. And then finally, we have the Soviet Union. After World War II, they almost had a civil war, but then they ended up spreading socialism across Europe for a while. The Cold War happened, the Soviet Union fell apart, and now we just have the country of Russia. Ultimately though, bottom line, 
World War II changed the world forever. Well, that's the end. That's the end of lecture for this year. Uh, I hope you have a wonderful summer, and I will see you back in August at school. So bye. Have a great weekend.